after a whirlwind year last year where I moved overseas and then had to move back again, I need to set up my studio again in the Blue Beach House. One of the things I needed was a new easel. And I chose this Montmartre Studio Easel because it tilts flat so I can work flat if I want to pour paint on instead of brushing. Crazy as it sounds, once I got this assembled, I decided to take it all apart again and redo it so I can show you how it's done. Step one is take number one and two and the two number threes. Now, small holes go on the bottom because that's where the cast is going to. Montmartre goes on the top. These two slots should be lined up. Number three, these holes I'm putting on the bottom. Don't know that it matters, but that's how I'm going to do it. So let's slot those in there. and slot that in. Okay, now we take four of the bolts out of packet A. Now these little bolts, these bolts have a little round thing for them to screw into. And I've put the holes on the bottom. That's where these go. So I'm gonna turn the whole thing over. Now the slots on top of these should be lined up that way so that the bolt can go into the hole. This flathead screwdriver is what you use to hold that steady. Then the Phillips head just screws in. When you get it nice and tight, will be right up against that edge. So I'll go around and do all the rest of it. Now the final part of step one is attaching the casters to the bottom. So grab the four casters and all the screws in the packet marked eye. Doesn't matter which one goes on where because they all swivel around 360 degrees. They're pretty cool, these castles, but they've got a little thing when you want to stop them swiveling to clip it like that. Stop them rolling, I should say. There we go. Now I just like to screw each one in a small way first to make sure I have the bottom plate nice and centered over the holes. That sort of is out the way, which is quite handy so you can see what you're doing. All right, now we can go ahead and tighten them all up. Nice and secure. Now go around and do all the other three casters. You could use a, a electric drill driver to speed things up, but unless you're experienced with it, I wouldn't recommend it because there's always a risk of going in at the wrong angle and ruining the holes that are there. So the old fashioned way is probably the safest Okay, step one is complete. We have our base. Awesome. In step two, we'll put the upright posts, which are number five, onto the center. Oops, 
and there's also these little bracing blocks to hold it in place. We'll put those on too. In this part, you want to make sure these holes are facing inwards. Now again, we've got the letter A bolts with the little round thing, and they've got to go in from underneath. So I'm going to turn it over onto its side. and work on this one first. So I've dropped a little screw in the hole, but you can see that, in the hole on the upright post. Then I'll use the flat screwdriver, to line it up, and put this one in. And screw it in. Screw it in until you get a nice tight to flip it over to the other side. Slot that into the slot on the top of the base. And that'll hold it up. So I thought, oh, wait a minute. I've got that the wrong way around. Remember the holes have to be facing inside. There we go. bracing bits on. Bracing bolts into these things are going to be screwed in with the bolts in H. This one uses an Allen key rather than a screwdriver. The key is in your packet J. So I don't know about you, but I find Allen keys to be pretty frustrating. Little beasts. Let's tighten them up. And that's why they always slip out. On to step three, we can put the base aside for a while while we make up the back. We're going to need pieces seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven. Ten and eleven, the slots must face inwards like so. Number seven, which is the top piece where the easel sits in, goes at the end of the long piece, the sides, that has this hole here. So a slot and then a hole. The other side just has a slot. Now, also important, you've got to get this the right way round. So the slot goes towards the bottom. Then number eight goes in and the slot with all the cogs is at the bottom. The piece with the long flat bit goes next to the top number seven, number seven, okay. Number nine goes at the other end down the bottom here. These holes need to be at the bottom, but we still need the slot to fit in there. So that goes in there. 
that slots in. This one slots in here, but there's no screws to hold that. They both slot into the side. Again, we'll be using these bolts with the little round bit on. We need the holes for these little round things to go into, which is on the other side. So again, I'm going to turn the whole thing over before I screw it together. Carefully turn it over so it doesn't all come apart. Right, I can drop the slots in the holes, screw those in all the way around. Once you've got it lined up, it should go in easily. All these pieces are really well machined. They go together easily. And the timber's got a beautiful smooth finish. It's a beautiful piece, this easel. Once you've got it tight, it will come up flush against the side there and you can move on to the next one. Okay, in step four, this is probably the trickiest part of the whole operation. We're going to attach the frame to the base. Now, a couple of points to note, the cogs must be facing towards the front of the easel, so that's the shortest part of the base is at the front. So what we need to do is to align these holes here with those holes there. And we're going to use the bolts out of packet C. They're the ones with the wooden cushions that go in between the frame and the base. Okay, so first step, put your bolt through the middle from the inside through. Then goes the cushion. The inside of the base and the bolt then goes through that hole. Like that. Then on the outside, we put the washer and the nail. Same thing on the other side. The bolt goes through first, then the cushion, the washer, and the knot. And you can tighten both those knots up so that this bolt is in flush with the timber. Step five involves putting the telescopic supports onto the back of the frame to stop us freewheeling everywhere. So I'm going to flip it around. Important, these slots go to the outside and the piece with the slot in goes to the bottom. Then this thinner piece goes up to the top inside that frame and we're going to attach that with the bolts from the packet L. Same thing again, bolt goes through the hole and of the inner piece, through the hole of the outer piece, washer goes on and the knob goes on. Of course, we also need to attach the bottom end and we use the bolts out of packet D for that. Pretty easy. Bolt through the inner piece, through the outer piece, washer goes on, and we tighten the knob. Okay, the last thing in step five is to take the knobs out of packet B. They go halfway along the 
telescopic support at the rear, that's this piece here. The knob part goes to the outside, so the bolt goes in through the hole in the middle here. The washer goes on. And then the knob goes on there. That'll tighten it up so they don't slip up and down all the time. Okay, now we can put the easel aside while we work on step six. Step six is attaching the easel mast, which is number 12, to the accessory tray, number 13. The mast slot side towards the tray gets attached as follows. There are four holes here. One, two, three, four. Probably going to be easier to do this flat. <laughs> Screws we're going to use are from Packet F. The last part in step six is to attach the trigger, which is in Packet E, to the bottom of the accessory tray. The accessory tray faces forward and that will go against the front of the easel. The trigger is, goes on the bottom of the accessory tray. But this pointy bit must go towards these holes in the metal frame. So when I turn it upside down, the pointy bit is facing upwards. Use the four screws from the same packet as the trigger, which I think was E. So, pointing, pointy bit pointing upwards. I'll just get it started. Hold that in place. Okay, once you've got all four screws in position, you can go ahead and tighten them up. In step seven, we can lay the, the easel flat because we're going to load the mast with the accessory tray through the slots. Easy. Through the top slot and through the bottom slot here. And once you get to the ratchet, that's going to engage it and stop it from coming back down. One little point here, the out of packet K, there is a little metal protector that goes in here. Right, now step eight. The mast extension, which is 15 is going to be slotted into the mast. But there is a flat end and a round end. So flat goes to flat, round goes to round. On the back of the mast extension, you'll find a knob from the packet K and a knob from the packet G. There's two holes on the back. K goes at the top. G goes at the bottom. Step nine is to put the top canvas support on using the bolt out of packet K. Now this is where the other little protective pad out of packet K comes in with, along with the bolt. So slide this over the mask extension. But before you do, put the the protector in and then screw the knob into the top and that holds that in place. Stand it up again. Tighten these knobs up so it won't fall back down. OK, 
Okay, now there's only one more thing to do. These four levelling bolts go in so you can keep your easel in, a, in one place and keep it level. Take the plastic knob off. Wind the wing nut all the way down. Screw it in. And the run stopper on the bottom to protect your claws. Mart tilting studio easel. Setting up the easel was the easy part. Now I've got to get back into the painting and finish off this one that's been sitting in my studio for about two years. If you need help with your painting skills, check out my courses at courses.bluebeachhouseart.com. Thanks for watching.